Hi, welcome to Healthy Transformation. I'm Jesse. I'm Jason. And today we're going to give you a complete beginner's guide to getting started with spin. So how do I set up my bike? Hey, let's go over a couple things. Most of you are probably doing your first spin class, or you could have done a couple spin classes and been like, my back's a little sore, my knees might be a little sore. So let's go over a proper setup and just exactly what you should be looking for with your spin bike. Now, the one we have here is, it might look different from the one that you are using at your spin studio or using at home. There's a couple of different brands and a couple of different makes that you can uh, purchase and what studios use uh, as their spin bikes. So this one's quite aerodynamic. <laughs> this one is, is like a true, true spin bike. So we'll go over what it should look like and usually it falls suit to whatever you're gonna need. There's just a couple of quick pointers. First, we're gonna go with your seat. Seat is the most important. So what we wanna do is find your hip bone. Okay, you're gonna find your hip bone right in here, push on that, and then stand next to the bike. Now you wanna line up the seat with the hip bone. So mine is a little high right now, it's just kind of above. So I'm just going to turn the knob, drop it down a little bit, and then tighten it back up. That should be about right, it's kind of right in my hip bone. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna hop on the bike for the next little bit. Uh, we're gonna kind of work our way down the bike. We're gonna start at the seat and work our way down. So next is going to be length of the seat. So where should the seat be? And right now, I am way too far forward. If you can see, my knees are way over top of my toes. Uh, I have to lean forward and it just feels very cramped. I'm very cramped on the bike. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the seat back. Just gonna adjust this and I'm just gonna slide this back. Now, every bike will have either, on the seat will either have numbers or letters for the adjustment and same on the seat, we'll either have numbers or letters on the seat. So when you go to your spin studio or when you go to, when you have your bike at home and you have to set it up, you can be like, okay, I'm at number five here and number nine here. So it's just something a, a good full point to remember. That feels a lot better, okay? So as I'm pedaling, my knees aren't, are just a little bit over top of my toes, which is fine. They're getting nice extension. It's not, I'm not having to drop my entire leg down and move. So my seat height is right. You always wanna have a little bit of a bend in the knee. Okay, so I'm just going through. Perfect. I could actually move my seat back just a little bit. I'm still a little bit far forward. So when you're grabbing onto the bars, a little bit of a break in the elbow. You don't wanna be back where your elbows are stuck. You just wanna have a nice little break in the elbows. Handlebar height. I was sitting up quite upright. So for a beginner, I would suggest that. Go a little bit more upright. I, kinda, I, I like to call riding a cruiser bike. You're kind of a bit more upright. Once you get used to the spin bike and you get used to the classes, then you can drop your bars down a little bit. So these go up and down. I like them down, I like them a bit more aerodynamic. We kind of get into that racing rider pose. This bike, you can adjust the handlebars forward and back. Not a lot of spin, spin bikes do that. So this one's a little unique in that way. So I'm not gonna go over that too much because most spin bikes don't do that. The key to that is just to have your arms out straight, have that little bend in the elbow. Next, pedals. So if you're going to like a real spin studio, they're gonna have like the clip-ins, okay? So you're gonna get the shoes from them and they're gonna have the clip-ins. Another style is what we call SPD. So it's like a mountain bike clip. So it's a little bit smaller. As you can see, like this would not fit into that. So it's just a smaller uh, clip-in that you can get. They're both the same. I really like the clip-ins because you get more power and when you're actually just doing the cage, so when there's no clip-in and you have the cage and the cage just goes on the tire and you stick your toe in, and away you go. It's not bad, but once you get the clip-ins, you get double the power. And it's so much nice to be kind of locked into the bike. I love the clip-ins. So if you can do clip-ins, do it. Now, the other last little bit is resistance. So you've got the resistance knob here. So this also works as your brake. So if you're turning and say your foot pops out and you're spinning, push that down. That also acts as your brake, which is great. So you've got a plus and a minus on the resistance band. So plus is adding the tension and negative is taking it off. Now on a Kaiser, you've actually got the gears. Well, you can adjust the gears up and down as you go. 
my personal opinion and the way that I feel and like a lot of people feel this way is always ride with a little bit of tension. Don't ride with no tension because the flywheel, which is this big thing in the back, most bikes have it up front, this one's in the back, will go around no matter what. So if you, know, if you have zero tension on and you get this going, it's just gonna take your legs. But you put a little bit of resistance on, it's gonna slow that down and you actually have to work for it. But my suggestion is always ride with a little bit of tension. When you see those, those spin classes and people are just woof, <laughs> wheels are going, add a little bit of tension on there. It'll actually save your knees also. Two things you definitely need for when you come to a spin class, a towel and also a water bottle. Uh, if you're doing like a 45 to 50 minute class, you should definitely go through one water bottle, if not a water bottle, a little bit more. If you wanna bring two water bottles, even better. So there are a couple classes out there that we do is what's called an enduro spin. And some people at home like to spin a little bit longer than 50 minutes. Some like to go an hour, hour and a half, two hours, three hours. Uh, an enduro spin usually lasts about an hour and a half. So if you're doing an enduro spin or anything longer than an hour class, I would definitely suggest uh, two water bottles. And there's also stuff you can put in the water that will help you out, it's called electrolytes. So what we got here is Scratch, which I actually personally use and I love it. You just put a couple scoops in your water bottle, just adds a little bit of electrolytes, gives you a little bit more energy, makes you feel good. Scratch is great. There's a bunch of other ones out there, but you want to get so like, uh, like a hydration drink. There's like Tailwind, there's F2C, there's a bunch of out there. Gatorade, not the best. Go with something that's got a little bit more substance to it. You can also get a little bit of food. We've got gels, energy tubes. Uh, I actually use Scratch. They're actually really good. Uh, they got a little bit of sugar in them. They got a little bit of energy to them. Something to nibble on just while you're riding, especially if you're going over an hour, just to have a little bit more water, a little more oof in your water, and just have a bit of food while you're riding is good. Uh, definitely recommend some gels. So during your class, you're definitely gonna wanna be sipping on your water. So I would say every five minutes, if not a little bit less, maybe four to five minutes, having a good little sip of water. Like you want to be consistently staying hydrated. You don't want to be like 20 minutes into the class and then be like, oh my gosh, I haven't drank anything. Pound a bunch of water. It can, it can upset your stomach. It can just sit there. Doesn't feel great. So just consistently sip like maybe every, every five minutes, maybe at the end of every song. All right, so here we got Jesse all set up on the bike. So for what he's wearing today, uh, it's, it's totally acceptable for a spin. He's just got his regular running shoes on. So typically a lot of the bikes will have a basket that you can put your foot into that will help with the pedal stroke. He's got his regular Lululemon shorts on and his moisture wicking Lululemon top. So this would totally be acceptable for a, a spin class. So again, you want to wear the moisture wicking clothing. So, cause you're going to get warm and you're going to sweat a lot. The better the clothing, the, the, the more, uh, comfortable you're gonna be for the ride. All right, so here we have Jesse now in his cycling gear. So what we got now is actual clip-in shoes. So Jesse's clipped into the pedals, so he can definitely use that pull-up, push-down stroke, which is awesome. He's got his cycling shorts on, which have a nice uh, chamois in the middle. Uh, it just helps to make your ride a little bit more comfortable. Yep. And we got the tight cycling jersey. So again, moisture wicking. Uh, you got pockets in the back, so you can put your water bottle back there, or you can put some food back there. Uh, so he is all decked out and ready for cycling. This is what it would look like on a female. So notice how there's like pockets in the back. She's got a chamois underneath. Okay, and now this is what somebody would wear to a spin class. Lululemon Alliance. They're high-waisted, they kind of cover what you need, and you're going to sweat a lot. So you need to make sure you're dressed appropriately. All right, we're gonna show you guys positions on the spin bike, and how to correctly do them, and what your body positioning should be as you're doing it. So I've already gone through my setup. I'm all set up and ready to go on the bike. This is just your standard seating. So as I've talked about before, we always wanna have a little bit of tension on the bike. Okay, a little bit of tension on the pedals. So this is just your standard cycle. Nice flat road. The next push we're gonna do is what's called the hover. 
So how this works is, I'm just gonna put a little bit of tension on, just so it slows my legs down a little bit. And we're just gonna go into the hopper, which is just, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it like this, okay? So you're still pedaling. Or some people like to actually lean on the bars. So there's two ways to do that. So this way, leaning on the bars, or standing up. Okay, you're just kind of doing, just like you're popping up on a hill. And then we're gonna sit back down. And the next one is the actual standing position. So again, you're gonna have a little bit of tension on there. We're just gonna stand up. So I like to have my hands on the back of the bars or up on the front here, okay? So wherever you feel comfortable. Now the key to these positions, when you change positions, is you gotta engage your core, okay? So core has to be engaged, especially when you go into that hover, engage that core, try not to have a lot of movement back and forth, keep that upper body still, okay? When you stand up, same thing. Little hand adjustment, standing up, perfect. Keep that core engaged, keep the shoulders nice and loose, no death grips. Hands are light, hands are loose, shoulders are loose. Another nice position to really work on those legs and keep the core engaged, put a little bit of tension on, sit back. Okay, so if your body is still, you're just using the legs. Now the key to the pedal stroke, especially if you're clipped in, if you got clips, this is key. So as you're riding, make sure you're using your glutes and your hamstrings to pull that pedal up. And then your quads to push it down. So glutes and hamstrings pull up, quads push down. Okay, so you're just keeping that steady flow. We don't wanna have a click at the top. None of that. We wanna keep that pedal stroke continuous, okay? Keep pushing those legs. So again, pull up, push down. Perfect. Now one of my favorite drills that I love to do, if you've done my spin classes, single leg, okay? So single leg. All we're gonna do is pull one leg off. It's hard to do without clips and a cage. So it's just, again, pulling up, pulling down. So it's just a single leg. I don't have clips on, so it makes it so tough. So it's just a single leg. So it's just, again, one foot at a time. And you're just doing that continuous rotation on that drill. All right, so Justin's here on the spin bike. He's just finished his spin class. And now we're going to stretch out the body uh, and the muscles that he has used today. So the first one we're gonna do is a calf stretch. So we're just gonna have our feet on the pedals. And all you're gonna do is just drop your heels down. And you're gonna feel a nice stretch through the calves. There we go. Yep, so a nice little calf stretch. So again, all you're doing is dropping your heels down as low as you can go. You're just gonna give that nice stretch to the calf. All right, next we're gonna do is just is gonna stand up and he's gonna pull one foot out and he's gonna stick it on the back of his seat and he's just gonna point his knees straight down and this is gonna be a nice little quad stretch for him. So it's just, and again, the more you lean back, the more of a quad stretch you're gonna get out of this. Uh, if you're super tight, again, just go to a comfortable stretch. Don't push the stretch, but this is the best time to do a stretching because you're actually still warm, the muscles are still warm. All right, we're gonna switch legs, perfect. So again, you just wanna point that knee straight down, keep the leg as close as you can to the bike. Excellent. All right, so we're gonna put the foot up onto the bars. So this is like an inner thigh and groin stretch. And we're just gonna sit back on the seat. And we're just gonna slightly push down on the inner thigh. And that will just give you a nice inner thigh and groin stretch. So everyone's gonna be a little bit different in how flexible they are and how much, how deep they can go into this stretch. So this is good right here. This is comfortable for Jesse, so he's just gonna go with that. Yeah, I've seen people do this. Yeah, if you move a little bit farther forward, uh, it just works a little bit of a different muscle group. All right, so now we're gonna hop off the bike. Excellent, and Jesse's gonna put one foot up here in the middle of the bike and just lean forward, and again, you're gonna get that glute and hamstring stretch. Up, 
And again, this is just leaning forward as much as you can until it's comfortable. Now we did use the upper body a little bit, so we can just bring the arm across the body and just do a little bit of a tricep. Because you're, you're basically pushing down the bars the whole time, like your entire body weight uh, is going down onto your arm. So your triceps do get a bit of a workout on this. So a little bit of a stretch out afterwards is a good thing. And then you can just do a little side to side with the neck. You can do it on the bike, off the bike, whatever you feel comfortable. Just a little side to side. And again, whatever feels comfortable for you. Another nice one is just the arms straight up overhead. Perfect. And then you can go to the side and that gets your lats and obliques. So here are the nine most common mistakes that we see in a spin class and how we can actually fix them. First one, how to set up the bike. So we've gone over this before. The next common mistake is resistance. Uh, a lot of people think that when they go on the spin bike, they just want to spin as fast as they can and that's going to burn the max amount of calories. It doesn't work that way. So you've got this big wheel. This one has it on the back. Most of them have it on the front. It's called a flywheel. And when you're doing zero resistance, it's actually the flywheel that's working. It's not your legs. So what you need to do for resistance is actually add tension on. So when we do a spin class, yes, it's okay to do a little bit of that, but 80% of your class should be with resistance on. Whether that's just a little bit, just to kind of slow the wheel down and you actually have to feel like you're riding on the road to actually climbing up a hill. The zero resistance is, is okay for a little bit of the class, but for the most part, you want to have some resistance on your bike. So one thing that I see a lot in my spin classes is people's upper body moving around a ton. The key is when you're riding is to keep your core tight and keep that upper body still. Uh, it is an all over body workout, but you do want to keep that body as still as possible, especially when you stand and hover. So when you stand on the bike, we don't want to be doing a lot of the side to side, back and forth, back and forth. That's just wasted energy. You just want to keep that body nice and still and just power with the legs, power with the legs, power with the legs. So try and keep that upper body as still as possible. Keep that core engaged. It's going to make your ride a lot better. What I see when I set people's bikes up or I see them in class is a lot of time they do like to have the seat really far forward. Uh, so what that does, that creates a little cramped position for them to be spinning in. You want to be able to have a nice even flow on the bike. So you don't want to be in a cramped position. You want to have the arms out, slight little bend in the elbow and be sitting back. You should not be in a cramped position where your knees are over top of your toes. You want to be back. So, so another one that I see is when people start to cycle is they love to grip the handlebars. They think they're going to fall off their bike. Don't worry. You're not going to fall off your bike. It's going to be okay. So what I call it is actually a death grip. People grab onto those bars and you can actually see the forearm muscles like tensing because they're gripping so hard. Keep those hands nice and loose. Keep everything up in, up in the upper body loose. Keep the shoulders loose. Keep the hands loose. You don't have to grip for because you're going to fall off the bike because you're not going to fall off the bike. Don't worry. Keep the hands nice and loose. Shoulders are loose. You'll keep it nice and relaxed and you'll feel so much better after your class. Another thing I see is when people get about three quarters of the way through the class and they've been pushing themselves hard, which is what we want, the head starts to drop. So it's like they're looking down at the ground. Um, they're looking down, if you have like a speedometer on their bike, they're looking at that and their head's just dropped. Keep that head up. I like to say look about three feet in front of you or if you feel better, you can look, look at yourself in the mirror, totally fine. But when you drop your head, what happens is you start to block off your air because your neck's cranked and you start to block off air. So you're trying to breathe heavy when you're doing your work, but you can't because you're cutting off the air uh, with your head drop. Keep your head up, that'll keep the rest of the body in alignment and you're able to breathe and you'll be so much happier. So with your pedal stroke, you always want to use glutes and hamstrings and your quads. A little bit of the calves, but for the most part you're using the big muscles and the glutes and the hamstrings and the quads. What happens is some people forget to activate their glutes and hamstrings and they're trying to use their quads to bring it up and it makes it inconsistent uh, pedal strokes. 
So it's almost like a clicking at the top and you're just jarring the pedals up and down. While you're riding, especially if you're using clip-ins, if you're using clip-ins, you gotta do this. So that is pulling up with your glutes and hamstrings and then driving down with the quads. You don't wanna be pointing your toe forward. You wanna keep it nice and flat, bring it up, using glutes and hamstrings, and then drive it down with your quad. That'll keep a consistent pedal stroke for you. Oh, the cell phone in the spin class. That is one, uh, <laughs> you wanna make the ride enjoyable for everybody. My thoughts on cell phones in the spin class, leave them in your bag in the change room. That text can wait for an extra 15 minutes while you're getting your class, don't worry. It just disrupts the class and it, you know, everybody's there wanting to spin hard, wanting to do their things and if somebody's beside them texting, it just kind of takes away from the class. So leave the phones in the bag. So clothing is a huge part of spinning. Uh, so there's a couple ways you can go. To be honest, I like wearing my, my Lulu shorts and a Lulu top and moisture wicking clothing. Some people like to go a little bit more cycling gear and what that is is padded shorts. So you can buy actual cycling, cycling shorts that have a chamois in between your legs. And it just gives you a bit more protection. My suggestion for new cyclists is to do that. It just makes the ride a little bit more comfortable, especially if you're going for longer rides. So there's sometimes we have enduro rides, which is like an hour and a half on a spin bike. If you're doing a ride like that, I also do it when I do enduro rides, is to wear the pad, wear the shanty. And uh, you can just get one of those at like old bike shop or anything like that. But also make sure you're wearing moisture wicking clothing. You don't want to wear like cotton or polyester or anything like that. You want to wear a moisture wicking uh, fabric while you're cycling. Hey, thanks for watching. If you love this video, make sure to check out the other videos in this playlist and we'll answer every commonly asked question if you're totally new to spinning at home or indoor cycling. And if you love this video, make sure to subscribe down below and give it a big thumbs up. Thank you very much.